Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode 34 in the Gleeble webinar series. My name is Dan Quigley with DSI, and it's my pleasure and honor to be with you, with you here today. As we usually do, we have a very diverse group on the call today from all over the world. And uh, we've all been watching the news as the pandemic has been raging in parts of the world. And uh, I am sad to say that we have lost some colleagues in the Gleeble community, and we know that Many of you on the call today are impacted very personally by these losses. So uh, our thoughts are with you and your families. And on behalf of everyone at DSI, and I'm sure I speak for the whole Gleeble community and the Gleeble family, uh, when I offer our condolences and we all wish for a speedy global recovery. We hope that you and your families and colleagues are staying safe and healthy. Uh, we also hope that these sessions will help us to stay connected and informed during this time when we can't gather in person. Today's presenter is Dr. Cheng Mei from the School of Materials Science and Engineering at Shanghai University in Shanghai, China. Her presentation is titled Research and Development of Advanced High Strength Steels for Automotive Applications Using the Gleeble 3500 System. Dr. Cheng is a researcher focusing on development and applications of automotive advanced high strength steel. She and her team focus on novel automotive AHSS development uh, microstructure adjustment and mechanical property improvements through process optimization of traditional steels. And as you know, these are extremely important both uh, to both upstream steel producers and downstream steel users. As we have done in the past, today's presenter has pre recorded her presentation. However, she is with us uh, here in the webinar and is available to answer questions live during the webinar using the chat feature in the webinar software. Uh, we know you're all busy, so our goal is to keep our webinars to one hour or less. And since the presentation is pre-recorded, and I know how long it will run, uh, I am certain that we will finish right on time today. However, we don't have time for a live Q&A at the end of the presentation. But again, we hope you use the, the chat feature here to ask our team or Dr. Chang any questions that you have. Video of this presentation will be available online soon. You'll be able to find a link to this video as well as videos of past webinars by going to our website at Gleeble.com. Uh, and they're kind of hidden there, but you can find the, the, the webinar page by going to the resources link in the top navigation bar. And then if you click on webinars, and then you'll, you'll find uh, links to view 34 of our past webinars. Uh, and also uh, you can sign up for future webinars. As a reminder, we will have another webinar in two weeks on Thursday, May 20th, at the same time as uh, basically right now. Uh, and uh, we'll have a link up to that. You can sign up for that uh, soon, uh, the next day or so, we'll have a link up there to sign up for that. But without further delay, uh, it's my pleasure to turn this over to Dr. Chen. Hello, good morning. It's my pleasure to be here to give this presentation. My topic is research and development of advanced high strength steels for automotive applications using Glebo. I'm from Shanghai University, Shanghai, China. My name is Zhang Mei. Contents Part 1 Brief Introduction of Shanghai University. Part 2 Brief Introduction of Advanced High Strength Steels. Part 3. Case Studies Case Studies on Development of Code Rolling Annealing Advanced High Strength Steels Case Study on Development of Thermal Mechanical Control Processing Hot Rolling Steel Case Study on Application Performance of Advanced High Strength Steel Part 4. Function Expansion and Enhancement of Glebo Part 1. Brief Introduction of Shanghai University We have three main campuses in Shanghai. The first one, Yantan Campus, and the second one, Baosan Campus, and the third one, Jading Campus, which are all not far away from the Oriental Piero TV Tower in Shanghai. This slide shows the historical inheritance of our school. Shanghai University, founded in 1922, and New Shanghai University, 
merged in 1994, Shanghai University is jointly governed by the Ministry of Education and Shanghai Municipal Government, and listed as a National University of 201 Project. Our university now has faculty over 3,000. And students over forty thousand. Now we have thirty-two colleges and schools. I am working at School of Material Science and Engineering. This slide shows the overall ranking of our university recent years. The overall ranking、Hello. of our university increases vastly recent years.、Hello. Excellence in research, including engineering, material science, chemistry, computer science, mathematics, environmental ecology, physics, biology, and biochemistry, social sciences. This slide shows the global network of our university. Including first-class university partners, strategic partners, partners in special disciplines, regional partners, partners for overseas education. This is a brief introduction of our university, Shanghai University. Part two: Brief introduction of advanced high strength steels. This slide shows the strength ductility combinations in different grades of steels. Here we see the conventional high strength steels, including IF high strength steels, big hardening high strength steels, and carbon manganese steels, HSLA steels. Here we see the first generation advanced high strength steels, including trip steel. Means transformation induced plasticity steel, and dual phase steel, complex phase steel, and martensitic steels. All these first generation advanced high strength steels show low energy absorption capacity. And here we see the second generation advanced high strength steels, including twin steels. Twin steels means twin induced plasticity steels with a quite high manganese content, and shows high cost, challenging the industrial processing, and with a poor weldability. And now we are all focusing on the third generation advanced high strength steels. For the future opportunity, with reduced alloying additions, lower cost, easy processing, and welding performance, the third generation is becoming a potential candidate for lightweight automotive applications. This slide shows the third generation advanced high strength steel. With a quite good tensile strength and elongation combination compared with that of the first generation advanced high strength steels and conventional high strength steels. Part three case studies. Case study one on development of cold rolling. And annealing advanced high strength steels. Two kinds of different carbon content steel are taken into this study, with seven percent manganese content, and the initial microstructure of the steels are all fully martensite, and AC one and AC three temperature, and MS temperature of the steel are conducted with deletometry method. This is the schematic illustration of our test. First, do the intercritical annealing on two kinds of steels, 
at 600 degrees C to 660 degrees C with two hour holding. After that, we can obtain the optimal temperature of intercritical annealing. Then fix the intercritical annealing temperature and kept for different times to find the optimal time of intercritical annealing. And then the steel or firstly what quenched before intercritical annealing and then annealed at 630 degrees C for one hour. Say the optimal intercritical temperature and time conditions obtained on the first two steps. And then with different water quantum preheat treatment conditions, the optimal water quantum conditions were obtained. After that, the steel were heated by watch quench at the optimal watch quenching temperature and then intercritically annealed at 630 degrees C with different time for one hour to eight hours. And then with XRD, SEM and unit axle tension to investigate the microstructure and properties of the steel. This slide shows the retained austenite fraction and the carbon content in the retained austenite of two kinds of steel with the intercritical temperature variation and with the intercritical annealing time changing. It is clear that when intercritical annealing temperature increases, the volume fraction of retained austenite increases. And with the critical annealing time increasing, volume fraction of retained austenite firstly increases and finally decreases. This slide shows the microstructure of different annealing temperature conditions. It is clear that lace and equi-exit ferrite and austenite are coexisted in the steel. At lower annealing temperature, there are a lot of fine dispersed carbides and a small proportion of retained austenite. With the increase of intercritical annealing at temperature, amount of carbides decreases obviously and the austenite fraction increases. But at intercritical annealing temperature of 660 degrees C, carbides dissolved completely and more martensite appears. For 0.2 carbon content steel, more and denser carbides distributed in the steel at lower intercritical annealing temperature due to the higher carbon content of it than that of the 0.15 carbon content steel. This slide shows the line scanning result of the manganese content of the steel. We can see the gamma phase shows very larger carbon contents compared with that of the alpha phase. Say, during intercritical annealing, partitioning of manganese occurs. This slide shows the microstructure of different annealing time conditions. It is clear that lathe and equi-exit ferrite and austenite are coexisted. And for one fourth hour and one half hour cases, mainly less like ferrite and austenite with a lot of undissolved carbides 
are existed for one hour and four hour cases, mainly equiax third ferrite and austenite. And amount of carbides gradually decreases with time increasing. For the eight hour case, only very small amount of undissolved carbide exists. For the 0.2 carbon content steel, more carbides exist in this steel because of the higher carbon content and the shorter annealing time. This slide shows the mechanical property of the steel for different annealing temperature cases. It is clear that the steel shows a very good microstructure combination for the certain heat treatment conditions. Here we can see the best temperature of intercritical annealing is preferred to 630 degrees C. Here we can see in this case the elongation is very low for 600 degrees C intercritical annealing condition. And the yield stress with yield stress decreases with the increase of intercritical annealing temperatures. Yield point elongation is larger than 10%, but with temperature increasing, the yield point elongation decreases. This is the result of uniaxial tension test at different intercritical annealing time cases. As intercritical annealing time increases, yield strength decreases gradually. This slide shows the mechanical properties of the steel for different intercritical annealing time cases. As intercritical annealing time increases, yield stress decreases gradually. And yield point elongation also decreases. But yield point elongation of the steel is larger than 10%. With intercritical annealing time increasing, tensile strength has no significant variation at one fourth hour and one half hour cases and increases at eight hour. Total elongation and product of tensile strength and elongation increase severely first and then decrease gradually. And the best intercritical annealing time is one half hour or one hour. This slide shows the volume fraction of retained austenite for strain of 10%, 20%, and 30% specimens. It is clear that the retained austenite fraction decreases with the strain increasing. It is clear that trip effect occurs the retained austenite gradually transforms into martensite and the fraction of martensite increases gradually, both for the 0.15 carbon content and 0.2 carbon content steels. This slide shows the work hardening curve of the steels. It shows three stage characteristics. At the first stage, it drops rapidly, softening and dislocation recovery of ferrite is the reason. At stage two, it fluctuates slowly, mountain side deformation and phase change expansion. At stage three, it fluctuates violently, positive discontinuous trip effect occurs. This slide shows the figure captured by DIC technique. Rudder spans and 
PLC effects of the steel are captured by cameras. It is clear stage 1 is the uniform elastic deformation stage, and stage 2 is the plastic deformation and onset and progress of Luther's band. And stage 3, plastic deformation progress and PLC bands propagation. It is clearly that the rudder's band decreases with the increase of intercritical annealing temperature, and the rudder's band decreases with the increase of intercritical annealing time, and the carbon content shows the inference on the yield point elongation behavior of the steel. This slide shows the XRD result of the steel. Retained austenite fraction are changed with the water quenching temperature. It decreases with water quenching temperature increasing. And retained austenite fraction increases first with the intercritical annealing time and finally decreases. Primary austenite grain size are shown in this figure. It is clear that lower water quenching temperature is beneficial for the refinement of the original microstructure of the steel. And the quenched microstructure for all these different temperature water quenching conditions are all fully martensite. This slide shows the microstructure of the steel for different quenching temperature cases. It's clear that the microstructure is mainly austenite and ferrite. And for the 950 degrees C case, lace like austenite are obtained. This slide shows the microstructure of the steels intercritical annealed for different times. For 800 degrees C water quenching condition, for intercritical annealing temperature of 630 degrees C case, the microstructure of the steel with water quenching first and intercritical annealed at 630 degrees C with different annealing time. This slide shows the mechanical property of the steel for different water quenching conditions and different intercritical annealing time conditions. It's very interesting that yield point elongation disappears. This slide shows the mechanical property of the steel for different heat treatment conditions. And it's clear that the product of tensile strength and elongation of the steel decreases with the increase of water quenching temperature. And the inference factors includes grain size, fraction of soft face austenite, both yield strength and tensile strength decreases with the increase of water quenching temperature. And influencing factors retain austenite fraction and its stability. Total elongation decreases with the increase of water quenching temperature. And the product of tensile strength and elongation decreases with the increase of water quenching temperature. So the best water quenching condition is set as 800 degrees C. This slide shows the mechanical properties of the steel for different intercritical annealing time cases. With intercritical annealing time increasing, tensile strength increases gradually, and the inference factor is hard face martensite and the yield stress decreases slightly. Inferencing factors 
is grain size and carbides. And the total elongation increases first and then decreases. Influencing factors including volume fraction of retained austenite and its stability. So finally, we know that product of tensile strength and elongation increases first and then decreases. And the best condition for intercritical annealing time is four hours. From above tests and analysis, it is clear that at 630 degrees C for one half hour and one hour, intercritical annealing process product of strength and elongation of 0.15% carbon steel is 39.9 gigapascal percent. Product of stress and elongation of 0.2% carbon steel reaches 47.4 gigapascal percent and 49 gigapascal percent respectively. And different quantum temperature. The product of tensile strength and elongation of the two samples decreases with the increase of water quenching temperature. And low water quenching temperature has a better combination of strength and ductility. The results show that the mechanical properties of the two cold rolling steels are the best when annealed at 800 degrees C for four hours. And the product of strength and elongation of 0.15% carbon content and 0.2% carbon content steels reaches 38.9 gigapascal percent and 42.2 gigapascal percent respectively. For ruder bands, Quenching treatment before intercritical annealing can eliminate the ruder strain existing in cold rolling and intercritical annealing steel. The increase of annealing temperature and the extension of annealing time can effectively eliminate the ruder strain. The steel with higher carbon content usually has larger ruder strain. Work hardening. There are three stages in work hardening curve of cold rolling sheet. The first stage, work hardening ratio decreases rapidly. And the second stage, it fluctuates slowly. And the third stage, it fluctuates violently. The range of third stage depends on the fraction and stability of retained austenite. Case study two on development of thermomechanical control processing hot rolling advanced high strength steels. In this case, the outline of the research includes CCT curve testing, one pass is a thermal compression test, two pass is a thermal compression test, multi pass compression test, and thermal mechanical control processing simulation and summary. CCT curves, the steel was heated to 1100 degrees C, kept two minutes, and cooled to 950 degrees C kept two minutes, then cooled to room temperature with different cooling rate. And after test, the specimens were cut into half to investigate the microstructure of the steel. This figure shows the CCT curve of the steel. This is the microstructure transitions of different cooling rate. With a cooling rate of 0.5 degrees C per second, the microstructure is mainly ferrite, and a small amount of pyrite is occurred between 1 degree C per second and 10 degree C per second. The steel obtained granular bainite microstructure. 
for cooling rate excess 10 degrees per second. The microstructure is a mixture of bainite martensite. So the microstructures for the steel is for 0.5 degrees per second ferrite and pellite. For 1 degrees per second to 10 degrees per second granular bainite for cooling rate larger than 10 degrees per second a mixture of bainite and martensite. The CCT curve of the steel has a broader temperature range of median temperature phase transition fit with the original microstructure, broaden the process window of manufacturing and welding of the steel. Compared with that of trip steel, a wide bainite transition region appears due to the decrease of carbon content for the steel, which not only increases the stability of microstructure at different cooling rates, but also significantly improve the welding performance of the steel. This slide shows the schematic diagram of compression test. In this test, effect of temperature, strain, and strain rate on full stress constitutive equation dynamic recrystallization grain size was determined by metrographic method. A dynamic recrystallization model is established. It can provide a basis of manufacturing and quality control of the steel. This slide shows the full stress curves of the steel with different strain rates deformed at different temperatures. The deformation temperature is between 800 and 1100 degrees C. Let's look at the microstructure transition of the steel during deformation. With temperature decreasing, microstructure changes a lot. We can see the fully dynamic recrystallization austenite at 11 100 degrees C and partial dynamic recrystallization austenite green for temperature 950 and non recrystallization microstructure at 900 degrees C. These figures shows the difference between the microstructure with different strain rates. It is clear that at 1000 degrees C, the deformation makes the steel a fully recrystallization microstructure. Very fine austenite grain size are obtained after deformation. Dynamic recrystallization is a process controlled by thermal activation. The relationship between full stress and deformation conditions is usually expressed by Sina Holomon parameter equation as following. The critical dynamic recrystallization conditions are obtained according to the following equations. And the fully dynamic recrystallization area, non dynamic recrystallization area, and partial dynamic recrystallization area are obtained. This figure shows the critical dynamic recrystallization conditions for the steel. We can see from strain of 0.2 to strain of 0.4, the grain of austenite shows totally different appearance. And this figure shows fine grain formed indicates obvious dynamic recrystallization of the steel. And the constitutive equation of full stress are established with the Jonas equation. On this figure, we can see the comparison of tested and the calculated full stress 
using the Jonas equation show the good accuracy of the predicted values of the constitutive equation. Then, to pass its thermal compression tests, the experimental procedure of two pass compression tests is conducted according to this plan. The steel was heated to 1200 degrees C, kept for 180 seconds, cooled to the deformation temperature, formed in two pass with different interpass times. After deformation, the specimen was water quenched as fast as possible to room temperature. We are focusing on the interpass time. What happened? Is there any static recurry sterilization? And the interpass time and deformation temperature on stress strain curves are shown in this slide. We can see at 800 degrees C, the curves is here with different interpass time. The curves do not change a lot. At 1000 degrees C, we can see the second heat shows totally different full stress behavior. The microstructure transition of the interpass time, 1 second, 50 second, and 100 seconds. We can see the recrystallization behavior. And for different deformation temperature, say 1050 degrees C and 850 degrees C, the requisitorization fraction are totally different. For different interpass time and deformation temperature, the steel shows different requisitorization fraction and grain size. For different strain rate with 0.1 per second and 10 per second, the requisitorization behavior is different. And the total strain amount, say 0.1 and 0.3, shows different requisitorization amount. Now let's see the effect of deformation parameters on static recrystallization fraction. The softening fraction of static recrystallization is determined by the 0.2% offset yield stress method according to this figure. And the recrystallization fraction is calculated according to this equation. This is the result of interpass time and static recrystallization fraction relationship. And 50% static recrystallization time versus deformation temperature and effect of deformation rate on requisitorization fraction, effect of strain amount on requisitorization fraction are obtained. From the above study, the static requisitorization kinetics model is established. Alternate requisitorization kinetics in steel are generally followed of Ramiel equation as shown here. Through the test results of 1150 and 950 degrees C, the N value and C value are obtained by linear regression. When requisitorized by 50%, the time use is as follows. And by linear regression, Q, A, P, and Q are obtained, and the S, R, X, 
say, static recrystallization kinetics model is established as following. And here is the comparison of experimental and predicted values of T0.5 static recrystallization. It's quite well fitted. Then let's discuss calculation of static recrystallization by stress relaxing method. This slide illustrates the stress relaxing test of the steel. The steel is firstly heated to a temperature and then cooling to the deformation temperature. After deformation, the sample was kept at a constant temperature for different relaxation time. Taking the logarithm of time as the horizontal coordinate, the stress relaxation curve includes three stages. The first stage is the recovery process of deformed austenite. The stress linearly decreases with the time slowly. And the second stage is the recrystallization process of austenite, say static recrystallization or metadynamic recrystallization and the stress decreases rapidly. The third stage is the recovery of austenite after recrystallization. And according the equation here, we can obtain static recrystallization fraction of the steel. Then let's go to the multi-pass hot rolling simulation simulating the 6-pass rough rolling and 10-pass fine rolling. After hot rolling, the steel will control cooling to room temperature, firstly with a slow cooling rate. And the start cooling temperature is 780 degrees C. Then cooling rate is controlled at 10 degrees C per second and the finished cooling temperature is set to 680 degrees C. After that, a uh, slow cooling rate and air cooling and very fast cooling rate are conducted on different samples to room temperature. This is the multi-pass compression test stress strain curves of the steel after multi-pass compression. This slide shows the stress strain curves of multi-pass compression test specimens with different start rolling temperature, say 1100, 1070 degrees C, 1040 degrees C. We can see different stress strain curves of the steel obtained. This slide shows the peak stress of different hot rolling conditions versus temperature. For different start rolling temperature, the stress variation are different. This is 1100 degrees C start rolling condition and this is 980 degrees C start rolling condition. So the stress increases fastly as the start rolling temperature decreases and the non-recrystallization temperature of the steel are obtained as 975 degrees C. This slide shows the comparison between peak stress of continuous compression simulation test and that of one pass compression test. Compare with one pass compression test result, multi pass compression test conducted with a start rolling temperature of 1100 degrees C shows a quite lower peak stress at later stage. However, 
for 980 degrees C starts rolling temperature. The peak stress are very high compared with that of one pass compression tests. This slide shows the austenite recrystallization in multi-pass compression for 1040 degrees C start rolling condition. The microstructures after reheating the first heat, the second heat, the third heat, the fourth heat, we can see the microstructure, the green size shows a very clear refining trends at the first four hits. And after that, the microstructure did not change a lot. The hot rolling simulation shows the microstructure changes a lot at the first several steps. And for the deformation temperature set to very lower as the start deformation temperature of 980 degrees C. The microstructure shows elongated austenite say not fully recrystallization happened. This is a green growth model for multi-pass deformation condition. Green size changes with the Zinoholoman parameter. This slide shows the simulation on multi-pass hot rolling. The process scheme for hot rolling simulation. Here, three pass deformation. The first one, the second one, and the third one. The first two are used to simulate the rough rolling procedure. And the third one is used to simulate the fine rolling procedure of the steel. Here is the microstructure of hot rolling simulated specimens. For different cooling rates, the microstructure on the surface and the core part of the specimen. It is clear that the steel shows very fine grain size after hot rolling simulation. And this is the micro hardness of the steel obtained after hot rolling simulation. And the steel shows a quite good property after hot rolling simulation. This is the mini tensile test fixture developed for the hot rolling simulation test specimen for mechanical property test. With the test result, we can see for 1 degree C per second to 10 degree C per second cooling conditions, the tensile strength is around 800 megapascal, and the total elongation is around 20%. The result show the accuracy of the test of the mini tensile test fixture and the of the test is within 5 per error ascent. Summary on case study of thermomechanical control processing research. Through laboratory physical simulation, the inference of various high temperature deformation parameters on recrystallization behavior and microstructure evolution during hot rolling procedure of ultra high strength microalloyed complex phase steel is systematically investigated. The method of evaluating the simulation process performance of hot rolling is developed. And study of multipass simulation of cumulative stress has inspired improvement of the mathematical model of compute rolling simulation. Through CCT curve research, one pass is a thermal compression test, two pass is a thermal compression test, multi-pass compression test, and thermal mechanical control processing simulation.
optimal process parameters are obtained for the steel. Case study 3 on application performance of advanced high strength steels. This part includes heat affected zone simulation, liquid metal embrittlement, dynamic continuous cooling transformation characteristics for sheet steel, hot forming simulation, warm forming simulation, and so on. This slide shows the research on dynamic continuous cooling transformation characteristics of boron 1.8 gigapascal high strength steel. Research on dynamic continuous cooling transformation characteristics of boron 1.8 gigapascal high strength steel is conducted on Glebo with a dog bone type specimen as shown in this figure. The specimen was heated with 10 degrees per second to 920 degrees C, kept for 300 seconds, and cooled to the deformation temperature deformed by 5%, 10%, 30%, and 50% with a strain rate of 0.15 per second, and then cooling with different cooling rate to room temperatures. Microstructure, micro hardness, and mechanical properties were determined by metrographic method, hardness examination, and uniaxo tensile test. Afterwards, Tensile test specimen were cut to investigate the microstructure and the property of the steel after deformation. This slide shows the dynamic continuous cooling transformation figure of the steel. Say DCCT curves. The red one refers to dynamic continuous cooling transformation and the black one refers to continuous cooling transformation. This figure shows the dynamic continuous cooling transformation curves of the steel with different deformation amount, 5%, 10%, 30%, and 50%. It is clear that deformation greatly increases the start temperature of ferrite transformation and causes the ferrite phase range and bainite phase range moving significantly to the upper left side and enlarges the ferrite phase raging of the steel. The mountain side start transformation temperature increases from 360 degrees C to 400 degrees C. The critical cooling rate increases with the deformation increasing, and the critical cooling rate increases to 20 degrees C per second for 5% and 10% deformation conditions and to 30 degrees C per second for 30% deformation, to 50 degrees C per second for 50% deformation condition, respectively. This slide shows the hardness and tensile test result. It is clear that the hardness for the certain conditions reaches a very high level, and tensile strength reaches around 1.8 gigapascal. This slide shows the liquid metal embrittlement research. The specimen was firstly heated with 15 degrees per second to 900 degrees C, kept for three minutes, and then cooled to the deformation temperature, deformed 40% with a constant deformation rate of 5 per second, and then cooling to room temperature with 30 degrees C per second. This slide shows the microstructure of the steel after deformation. This is the 
microstructure of the specimen after test and cracks or free of cracks conditions. The EDS analysis shows that the zinc content of the specimen decreases and the rich zinc liquid surface layer penetrates along the green boundary of austenite. The high temperature oxidation resistance of coated steel is better than that of the bare steel. The room temperature tensile strength of the formed specimen can basically meet the requirements. When forming above 700 degrees C, the melting point of the GA sample is higher than that of the GI specimen because the coating contains ferrite element. So the crack initiation and propagation are relatively slight under the same deformation conditions. The micro cracks are less and the propagation depth is shallower. The reason of micro cracks is that liquid metal embrittlement. During thermal deformation, the working temperature is high. The rich zinc liquid surface layer penetrates along the austenite grain boundary and finally leads to embrittlement. Part 4 Function Expansion and Enhancement of Glebal. This is a mini tensile test fixture developed for mechanical property tests. With this fixture, not only the microstructure information, but also mechanical properties of the steel can be obtained. Butterfly specimen for warm deformation and thermal deformation conditions. With butterfly specimen, after deformation, we can cut mini tensile test specimen and obtain not only the microstructure information, but also the mechanical properties of the steel after deformation. That's all. My name is Zhang Mei from Shanghai University. Thank you for your attention. And I want to thank Dr. Cheng for, for preparing that presentation. Uh, it was great. I, I know we, she was able to answer several questions online, although unfortunately it did seem like uh, a number of our attendees were uh, kicked out of the system that we didn't do that on purpose that uh, that does happen periodically uh it does seem like it happened a bit more in, in china and uh during practice this, this did work okay and she was able to answer questions however uh, we did have a number of great questions uh, that came in throughout the presentation uh, we will pass those on to dr cheng and she has agreed to uh, look through them and uh, answer questions connect directly with people so i want to again uh, thank everyone for for coming uh, thank Dr. Chang for putting together the great presentation and sharing it with us. Uh, if anyone out there has any technical questions about the operation of their Glebal, please contact our service team. I mentioned this, I think, every webinar. Uh, we do have a, a service portal that we are hoping people will use. Uh, it's really the best way to get service uh, from, from, our, from our team. Uh, you can do that by going to the resources page uh, on, our, uh, on our website uh, and then click on the uh, link for um, I believe it says uh, service or create a service portal, create a service ticket. Uh, you can do that, and that's the best way to get a hold of our guys because, again, they do usually travel quite a bit. If you have any questions about how Glebal can support your research, please email me, and I will connect you with an application expert to help you find the right solution. My email address is dan.quigley at I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, please stay safe and healthy.